How's it done everyone? Pop-Tart here. Welcome back to the Our Team channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Sikorsky S-70i Blackhawk in 1.5 to 1 scale. So the S-70 is a medium-sized utility helicopter. One of its variants you may be more familiar with is the S-70A, better known by its US Army designation of the UH-60 Blackhawk. The S-70i here, though, is the international version and is the most modern iteration. As for the build itself, this beautiful helicopter was designed by Taxi, who also has a couple showcases on the channel that you should definitely watch. Shameless blood. And as you can see here, we actually have two different variants of the S-70i that we'll be looking at here today. As I've said countless times already, this first one here is the S-70i Blackhawk, which is designed for military and police use. This second version here is the S-70i Firehawk. It has an additional water tank installed on the underbelly here for, as the name suggests, firefighting operations. So you'll see this with operators such as Cal Fire, LA County Fire, stuff like that. I'll be first showing you how to build the base S-70i Blackhawk, and at the end of the video, I'll be showing you how to convert it into the Firehawk, if you so choose. So, as I mentioned at the start, this is in 1.5 to 1 scale, meaning that every 1 meter in real life is equivalent to 1.5 blocks exactly. So this will be perfectly to scale with all of our other 1.5 to 1 aircraft on the channel. Anyways, before we get started here, there's just one last thing to mention. As always, this build does make use of our very own custom Aeroteam texture pack. A download link to version 1 of this pack for Minecraft 1.13 can be found in the description below if you don't have it already. Now, as you can probably see here, I'm personally using the as-of-yet unreleased version 2, so this will be different from the pack you're using. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, there are virtually no differences in terms of color or detail from version 1, so everything should be good for you otherwise. If you're stuck using the default texture pack instead of the Aero Team pack, if you're building on console or something, I will do my best to show you how to build this in default as well. Please do keep in mind, though, that I highly recommend using the Aero Team pack instead if you have the option to do so, as it'll look much better. Anyways, with that, let's get going on this tutorial. So, first things first, here's some dimensions for you to help you figure out where you want to put this. This helicopter is 30 blocks long, 25 blocks across, and 8 blocks tall for the Blackhawk, or 9 blocks tall for the Firehawk version, as it is raised slightly off the ground. So just keep that in mind as you're getting started. Now as for materials, here in the Aeroteam pack we're using the wool block, coupled with the purple stairs and slabs for the smooth and shiny wool coloration for the helicopter. If you're in default, you'll probably want to use something like quartz or smooth quartz as an alternative, so just use that instead of wool as I'm building. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be referring to these as the wool stairs and slabs, but again, that's the purpose stairs and slabs in the Aero Team pack. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going on layer 1 of the S70. Alright, so for layer 1 here, if you are building this landed on the ground as I am here, for the Blackhawk, you'll be starting one block off the ground in line with this first block, like so. So no space between layer 1 here and the ground, it's just in line with this block. Now for the Firehawk here, it's actually raised a little bit off the ground. So if you are planning on building just straight from the Blackhawk into the Firehawk, you know, you're not building the Blackhawk or whatever, for the Firehawk, you'll be starting two blocks off the ground, in line with the second block right here, and this will land you with a one block space between layer 1 and the ground, like so. Since I'm starting with the Blackhawk here and then converting it over into the Firehawk at the end of the tutorial, I'm going to be starting off with the Blackhawk here, so again, that's one space off the ground, just like this. But please do keep in mind that extra one block raise for the Firehawk, so you save yourself that trouble later. If you're building this helicopter in flight, though, in the air, then obviously you don't have to worry about where you're starting, but this is just if you want it to line up with the ground. Anyways, now that we have that figured out, let's get going on layer 1 here. So I'm just going to throw away this temporary block, don't need it anymore. For layer 1, we're actually going to be starting with a top half birch trapdoor, like so. So in the Aero Team pack here, the birch trapdoor is a wool texture like this to blend in with the wool material. In default, uh, probably just use an iron trapdoor or something instead so you miss out on the uh, weird tan texture of the wood material. But yeah, here in the Aero Team pack, the birch trapdoor is the uh, wool trapdoor, like so. So now that we have that, I can get rid of the spacer marker there. Back from this top half birch trapdoor right here, we're going to have two wool top slabs going back, like so. Out to either side here, we're going to grab an acacia trapdoor, and this is going to go out from the first uh, wool top slab right there. Then drop a birch trapdoor out to the side of that second wool top slab right there. So this acacia trapdoor, as you can see here, is a black wool texture. This is going to get the bubble window on the side of the nose here started. Now, it's important to mention that in the version 1 of the Air Team pack, which you'll probably be using if you're following along as soon as this video comes out, does not contain a black wool uh, top half trapdoor like this. The acacia trapdoor is an orange texture in the old pack, if I remember correctly, and the uh, powered rail model, which the black wool trapdoor was on, didn't have a top half version. So you probably won't be able to include this. 
if you're building along a couple months after this video comes out, after we've released the, the uh, version 2 pack here, of course, then you'll be able to use that. But in the time being, you'll probably just have to leave that out, so uh, it's just the stair when we get to layer 2 there. But yeah, that's the deal that's kind of going on here. Anyways, now that we have that, we can just do this on the other side here. So, Acacia Trapdoor out to the side of that first wool top sub there, and a Birch Trapdoor out to the side of the second. Now that we have that kind of mess out of the way from the nose, we'll be dropping three wool top subs back from all this here. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And one, two, and three. So that'll give you a nice three by three box right there. Now out to the side here, we're gonna grab an Iron Trapdoor, which I don't have in my inventory here. So that'll go out to the side of that third uh, wool... Um, We'll top side pack right there, so Iron Trapdoor out to the sides. This will get the landed gear started uh, here for the main landed gear. Now, uh, yet another version 1 texture pack note. In uh, the V1 Aero Team pack, the Iron Trapdoor is a... Well, here, let me get this out. So, the Iron Trapdoor is, well, an Iron Trapdoor in the version 2 pack, and the Jungle Trapdoor is this smooth stone texture. Now, in version 1 of this pack, it's the other way around. So, the Iron Trapdoor will be the smooth stone texture, and the Jungle Trapdoor is the uh, nicely textured, kind of more mechanical uh, Iron Trapdoor like this. So, in version 1 of the Aero Team pack, use the Jungle Trapdoor. Now you can see why this is a bit of a mess, especially as I'm doing tutorials in texture packs that aren't even released yet. But hopefully this should make things a lot nicer in the future later on down the line. So, my apologies if this is a bit confusing, but uh, yeah, that's what's going on here. So now that we have that, we're just gonna get rid of all that. Back from this now, where we have this 3x3 box, we're gonna have four more wool top subs going back from all of this here. One, two, three, and four, just like this. Box it off to the sides. Next, what we're gonna do here is put in the wheels for the main landed gear. Now for this here, what we're gonna be using is a player stall model. It's just the right size for the wheels in this scale for this helicopter. And so, uh, oh, I have it here in my inventory. I was gonna grab it, but... Uh, yeah, so this is the model we use here for the wheels. It's a player stall with a very nice tire texture and uh, rim texture. I have to say this in every single one of my tutorials that I use it in now, but uh, I don't know where we got it, and I unfortunately can't link you to a slash give command or anything to uh, give this to yourself, for this specific head that is. I've done a lot of digging to try to find one that's like this, but I haven't been able to come across one, so... If you do find a player still that's like this, with a uh, nice tire texture like this, you know, wheel rimming, all of that good stuff, then feel free to use this in place of the player stall wheels here, uh, if you are building this yourself. Otherwise, if you can't find that, or if you are uh, if you have been able to find one but don't have access to commands or something like that, another alternative is to use a uh, wither skeleton stall like this, and angle it towards the center of the aircraft so you don't get that, or towards, towards the helicopter that is, so you don't get the uh, face of the texture showing. And this will give you a nice kind of black uh, wheel shape here for the tires, and so you can use that instead if you so choose. But again, here on the Air Team server, we use this uh, player head here as a nice wheel detail. So, now that we have that going for the main landed gear here, we can continue on with the aft section. So, back from this now, what we're going to have here, from the center block of these three, is three wool top subs going back. So, one, two, and three, like so. It's just three going back here, don't box this off to the sides, that's finished it for the belly here. And back from this now, we have five birch trapdoors. One, two, three, four, and five. Like so. And with that, that is everything for layer one. Alright, so for layer 2 here, we'll be starting on top of this very first block that we placed in the last layer, on top of this birch trapdoor right here. On top of it, we're going to have a wool half slab right there, and a block of wool behind. Now for an extra added detail out to the sides of this wool slab right here, what we're going to have is a... Uh, we're going to try to place a button on the side of this block right here. Now, as you'll probably know, in vanilla, this won't work very well. But if you have access to world edit, a trick that we can use here is a temporary block out to the side, button on its face, grab a stick or any old item, type slash REPL0 to switch this over to the replace tool, select this button by uh, left-clicking on it, remove it, and paste over that temporary block like so, and that'll give you this button tricked into, well, not falling off of the half-slab like this. Same thing on the other side here, so block out to the side, stone button, select, and paste. There we go. If you don't have access to world edit and can't include that detail, you probably don't have to worry about it, but I highly recommend including it if you do have the option to. 
Anyway, so now that we have that section of the nose done, what we're going to do is grab a nether brick stair, which for some reason I don't have in my inventory. We're going to have a nether brick stair facing forwards out to either side of that block of wool right there, and that's going to finish off these nose bubble windows right here. Once we have that, uh, back from both of these here, we're going to have a block of wool, and those are trapdoors. I'm an idiot. Okay, shift click. There we go. Block of wool back from both of those there, and a quartz stair facing forwards now. This will be for the doors of the aircraft here, or for the helicopter rather, I'm so used to saying aircraft in these tutorials. So this will be for the doors of the helicopter here. Now, if you are building the entire aircraft, there I go again. If you are building the entire helicopter out of quartz here, uh, what you can do is uh, try using cobblestone as an accent uh, instead, so it differentiates it from the aircraft it's... I swear to god. Okay, so you can use cobblestone to try to differentiate it from the fuselage of the helicopter here if you want. Or if you're in 1.14 and above, you can try using something like uh, smooth uh, diorite, or polished diorite stairs, that is. It's a more white um, color than cobblestone is, so it kind of is more accurate to the helicopter itself. But it's still, you know, a little bit off-white, and so using quartz here, since we have the option to... Uh, to accent it from the wool. Quartz is a much nicer alternative here in the Aero Team pack. So yeah, that's what's going on here in terms of that. So I can throw all this away now again and <laughs> get back to building. So now that we have these two quartz stairs in place, or whatever you're using for your door accents, back from both of these now we're going to have two wool stairs facing backwards, like so. This will get the windows started. Block of wool going back right here, then a birch trapdoor on the bottom half out from this right here to finish off the main landing gear assembly. Next going back here, we're going to have a wool half slab with a wool stair facing backwards, then a wool stair facing forwards, like so. Now to block off all of these windows and doors, we'll grab a black wool here, and starting from the quartz stair right here, just fill in all of these extra gaps where there are... Um, well, gaps showing, and that'll block off all of these windows nicely. So you have the door here, these two thin windows, and then the two larger square windows going towards the rear. So now that we have that, going back from this here, what we can do is grab a block of wool back from both of these uh, stairs right there, with a button out to the side. Now that we have that, we're going to come in a block here, and starting on top of this um, wool uh, top slope right there, place nine blocks going back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, like so. Coming back to the front of this row now, skipping this first block, grab a tripwire hook, and out to the side of the second block here, we're gonna have a tripwire hook on both sides, like this. Next, towards the rear here, uh, what we're gonna have here is an upside down, not an upside down, a normal wool stair facing backwards off of that block of wool right there. Now on the underside here for the uh, tail wheel. What we're going to do is drop a player skull underneath this very last wool block here. Not the wool stair, but this wool block. So, like this. Once you have that wheel in place there, hop down underneath, and uh, you'll see this occupies this middle block, these three exposed blocks right here. From this uh, Ford's most one here, underneath it, place a lever right there. Make sure it's flipped facing backwards into this wheel, like so. That'll give you that tail wheel, and that is everything for layer 2. Alright, so for layer 3 here, the first thing we're going to be doing is putting in the cockpit glass at the front of the helicopter. For this from this wool block here, come back a block right here and place a black wool full block with a nether brick half slab out to the sides. Back from these nether brick half slabs now, place a black wool full block right there, so this will give you this kind of sloping shape coming up right here. Back from both of these black wool full blocks now, place two upside down stairs facing backwards, of your wool stairs that is, on both sides like this. That'll finish off these side windows here as you can see. Next, block of wool back from both of those with a button out to the side. Then a uh, wool top slab, like this. Upside down wool stair facing backwards, and an upside down wool stair facing forwards, like so. And that'll square off all of these windows nicely as you can see here. Then just on top of all of these black wool blocks from the previous layer right there, just fill that in with black wool on the, well, on this layer here to block off all of those windows. Now that we have that, what we're going to do is drop a wool half slab back from those two upside down stairs right there, with a black wool, or a white wool block in the center. Two more blocks going back, like so, with a dark oak button out to the side of that second, just like this, so from the middle block of these three. Next, grab quartz, and what we're going to have here is three blocks of quartz going back. One, two, and three. 
with a tripwire hook out to the side of this middle block right here. Same thing on the other side, just like this. Then two quartz half slabs going back. Next what we have here is a wool half slab that a wool stair facing forwards. Full block behind that and an upside down wool stair facing backwards. Now on the face of this wool stair right here we're going to get a button using the same trick that we did up at the front there. So temporary block behind, stone button, stick, slash ripple zero, select, and paste. Like so. And again, just as we did up at the front there with the nose, if you don't have access to world edit and can't use that trick, you probably don't have to worry about it, but I highly recommend that you uh, do include this if you can. Anyways, now that we have that, to put in the horizontal stabilizers here, out from this wool full block right here, we've got three quartz half slabs, one, two, and three, then three more behind, one, two, and three, just like that. Same thing on the right side here, one, two, and three, and then three torn slabs behind to box that off into two by three shape, just like this. And that'll do it for layer three. All right, so for layer four here, what we're gonna be doing is basically just capping off the fuselage of the helicopter. So where we have this black wool full block at the start of the uh, cockpit glass from the previous layer, drop a wool half slab back from it right here, and a second, like so. Wool stair facing forwards with one, oh, one, two, and three blocks going back. Out to the sides of this first block right here, we have a wool stair facing out to the side, like this. Half slab forwards, and a birch trapdoor in front, like so. Or again, in default, an iron trapdoor. This should give you a curving shape looking like this. Now back from this uh, last wool block here, the last one of the three, we have a diorite full block. Now in version one of the Aero Team pack, the old version, this same texture color is actually on the prismarine block, if I remember correctly. So you'll want to use that instead of diorite here for this uh, color matching. Anyways, with that out of the way, we have this diorite full block right here, then a diorite stair facing backwards, and a diorite half slab like so. With a quartz half slab back from that to uh, round off with the rear. And with that, that is everything for layer 4. Alright, so now that we have the fuselage of the helicopter done here, the next thing we're going to be doing is putting in the vertical stabilizer. So coming down to layer 3 here, you'll see that we have this um, wool stair facing forwards here, followed by these two wool blocks right here, or wool block and upside down stair. On top of this first wool block right here, what we're going to have here is a wool stair facing forwards, with a block of wool behind, and a wool top slab right there. On top of that wool block now, wool stair facing forwards, wool block back from it, and a wool top slab again. Now to finish off the vertical stabilizer right here, what we're going to have is a uh, wool full block on top of that wool block from the previous layer there and a wool half slab going back to round off the uh, flat edge of the vertical stabilizer. Now out to the side here we have a little bit of kind of a round bulb on the side here for the uh, mount for the tail rotor. So for this what we're going to have is a wool stair facing out to the, well, out to the side from it facing forwards like this from the uh, wool full block there. Then corner this off with a wool stair facing out to the side like this. So this will give you this corner stair right here with just this single little, you know, knob in the corner. Now to get it to keep this shape without this stair, you know, sticking out kind of on the ugly side, grab a stick slash REPL zero. This will switch it over to the replace tool with the air block and just paste over that stair like this. So that will remove that stair while also keeping this stair cornered off in the way it previously was when that stair was there. So it's as if nothing changed, but we don't have that, you know, sticking out. So that will give you that little bulb on the side there, and that is everything for the vertical stabilizer. Alright, so the next thing we're going to be doing here is putting in our two General Electric T700GE701D turboshaft engines. That's a rather long name for an engine, but the engine itself is fairly simple to build. So for this, the first thing we're going to do is find this wool stair that's kind of facing out to the side right here in layer 4. Going back from it, we're going to have a netherbird stair facing forwards. This will corner off with the sideways stair like this. This will give you the intake for the engine. Back from this now, we have two blocks of quartz going back. Then a cobblestone stair facing out to the side like this. Now what we want for this is a cobblestone stair that is cornered like this, so... Um, basically like that. Now getting it to keep this shape is a little bit complicated, especially given the fact that we need to put another block on it here, so we're going to take this from a different approach. Uh, let's see, first, you can place that diorite stair back, we're going to be doing this a different way. So we're going to have a temporary block off of the side of this right here, 
Now place a dead fire coral fan on the face of this temporary block. Grab your stick, same uh, world edit trick as we've always used. Select that dead fire coral fan, which is a black wool vertical slab, and paste over that temporary block. Now that we've got all of the block connections out of the way, we can worry about cornering this stair off now. So what we're going to do for this is place a cobblestone stair just anywhere, facing out to the side, with a cobblestone stair facing forwards off from it like this. So you get this uh, corner stair that's kind of cornered off to the left side of the aircraft like this, so the forward left side. Select that now, remove all of these, and paste over that um, block like that. I'm not in fast mode, so <laughs> there you go. Make sure that you're in slash slash fast. Uh, so yeah, my apologies for that, but um, paste over. And you can see why now why I wanted to put that black wool vertical slab on its face before worrying about the corner, because block updates mess with it, but yeah. So um, I'm just going to do this again here. Yeah, make sure you're in fast mode before you do any of that. So now that we have that in, you can select that um, uh, corner stair there and paste over just like that. So with that mess out of the way, that'll leave us with this uh, corner stair facing off to the left side of the aircraft and this black wool vertical slab against it like this. My apologies if that was a bit confusing, but hopefully in the end you should get this general shape. So this is for the exhaust of the turboshaft engine. Now unlike the turbofan engines you may be used to in our tutorials for the turboshaft engines here in helicopters, what's going on is the air is, uh, well, you know, it's the intake in the front, the compressors and all that in the engine, but then instead of the, well, you know, the compressors and turbines and all that in the engine, then uh, driving the um, propulsion with thrust and all of that, it's instead just exhausted out the side and it's uh, instead driving the uh, drive shaft for the main rotor on top. So that's what drives all of the, um, well, you know, the rotation for the rotor on top. So yeah, that was a bit of a messy explanation on my part, but hopefully you should get the idea. So it's a bit of an uh, interesting engine design in that regard. Anyways, with that little ramble, we can now do this on the other side here. So I'm just going to knock out this TNT that was placed by Mind here, who is stalking me as I record. So for this, it's just the same thing on the other side here. Another part stair facing forwards, and two blocks of quartz going back from it here. Cobblestone stair just as a temporary kind of setup. Temporary block out to the side, dead fire coral fan there. Select that and paste. And now we can worry about cornering that stair off nicely. So, stair out to the side, stair forwards to corner it off like this, so it's cornered towards the forward right side of the aircraft. Select that, remove all of that, and paste over. Like so. And he updated the bloody block. Mind you're a fool. So now you can see why you don't update these blocks after you've placed them. So, yeah. I'm just gonna fix his little mistake. Um, yeah. The wrong order. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yep. All good. Don't, don't pay attention to mind. He's just there. Anyways, with that all out of the way, that is everything for the engines. So with that, next we can move on to the rotors. Alright, so for the rotors here, we're going to be starting with the tail rotor and then moving on to the main rotor here. So we'll be starting right beside the uh, vertical stabilizer here on the right hand side of it, where we had this uh, black wool, or <laughs> wool full block rather, with the bulbs off to the side here that we finished off with the end of the vertical stabilizer. Coming out from it here, we're going to have a netherbird stair facing forwards like this. Next time in a block here, so you're in line with the vertical stabilizer, and we have a nether brick stair upside down facing forwards like this, so kind of in at an angle for the slant. And on top of this upside down stair here, we have a nether brick half slab. So for the bottom portion of the tail rotor now, we're going to have an upside down nether brick stair facing backwards underneath that first stair that we placed. Then come out at an angle right here, and we have a nether brick stair facing forwards, or backwards now rather. So you get this angle looking like this, then a black wool, or nether brick half slab rather, underneath it, just like this. This will give you these two blades here for the rotor. Now for the other two here, uh, where we have this upside down stair right here, this bottom one of the two, place two nether brick top slabs coming forwards from it here, then a nether brick half slab on top of the forwards most one right there. Now going backwards, from this nether brick stair here, we have two nether brick half slabs, then a nether brick top slab underneath the uh, backwards most one, just like this. And with that, that will give you the four-bladed tail rotor. Now that we have the tail rotor in place here, the next thing we're going to be doing is putting in the main rotor. 
So for this, we're just going to come down to the fuselage right here. On layer 4, where you see we have this wool stair right here, and then this row of three wool going back from it. On top of the second block of wool right here, the middle one of these three, what we're going to be doing is placing down a cobblestone wall on top of it, like this, with a stone brick slab on top. Next, to start putting in the rotors here, for the main rotor, the S70, it's a four-bladed rotor. So for the uh, front rotor, uh, we have three nether brick half slabs going forwards from the stone half slab right here. One, two, and three. Now, as it's kind of angled uh, forwards a little bit here, it, the uh, rotors are at a bit of an inclination. So for this next bit, we're going to be coming down a layer here, and we have six nether brick top slabs going forwards. So down a layer here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's switch over to your stone half slabs, and down a half slab layer here, we have one and two going forwards. Then a stone brick top slab down a layer, just like this. That'll give you this forward blade right here. Now for the side blades, going out to the side this time, in the same layer as this uh, stone slab right here, we have nine nether brick half slabs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then switching over to stone brick here for the tip of the blade, uh, one stone half slab there. Then down a layer, one and two stone top slabs. Same thing on the right side of the helicopter here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine nether brick slabs. One uh, stone brick slab there, and then two stone brick top slabs. That'll do it for the side rotors here. Now for the fourth and final blade of the main rotor here, what we're going to be doing is dropping two half slabs going back from that stone slab right there. Then coming up a layer this time for the... Uh, forward slant of the uh, main rotor here. We're going to be placing four top slabs going back with another brick. So that's one already there, two, three, and four, like this. Up a layer again, three half slabs going back, and then one stone brick slab right there for the uh, uh, tip of the blade. Now as the blade kind of starts to sag under its own weight here at the back, we're going to actually be dropping down a slab layer again for this last part. And for this, this is just two stone brick top slabs right there, just like that. So it should give you a curving shape looking like this. And with that, that'll do it for the blades of the rotor. So we just have to finish off the connection here at the uh, center. So for this, what we're going to be doing is grabbing a lever, and on the innermost blocks of these rows of nether brick right here, we're going to be dropping a lever underneath each, make sure it's flipped in towards the center. So this goes on basically all four of these rotors here, so we have one on the left rotor, one on the front, one on the right rotor, and one on the rear rotor, all angled in towards the center like this. This is for these um, uh, rod connections. I, I'm, I'm not as good with helicopters as I am with aircraft, but so I, I know there's probably a word for this, but I don't know it. It's these little rod connections that um, connect into the shaft itself for controlling the feathering of the rotors. So there are these rods that stick down right at the base here. Again, though, I, I don't know what the word is, but it, it's a thing that's there. So that's what these levers are for here. Now there's one last thing we can do as well here, and that's to actually thicken off this cobblestone wall here in the center using, yet again, another world edit trick. So for this, we're just gonna grab a cobblestone wall, drop this anywhere, and drop a cobblestone wall off to all four sides like this. So you get this kind of plus shape. Grab a stick, slash ruffle zero, as we've always done. Select that center cobblestone wall right there, the one with the plus shape. Knock all the rest of those out and paste that over the center cobblestone wall like that. That'll thicken off the wall here nicely to give it a much better definition. And uh, yeah, that's about it for the main rotor. So with that, that is everything there is to it for the S70i Blackhawk. If you're just building the Blackhawk here and not converting it into the Firehawk, then that's it, you're done with this tutorial, and you can skip right on ahead to the end of the video. If you are converting this into the Firehawk though, that's what we'll be covering next. Alright, so for the S70i Firehawk here, as I mentioned at the start, this is raised uh, one block off the ground compared to the base S70. This is due to the uh, larger water tank on the underbelly, of course, and the extended landing gear to accommodate for that. So if you're building this on the ground, you should have something looking like this at this point. So it's basically hovering a block off the ground. Again, though, if you're building this in the air, you don't have to worry about that part, but, uh, yeah. So, for the conversion here, the first thing we're going to be doing is just knocking out the main landing gear. So, this iron trapdoor, the birch trapdoor, and the player stole there. Same thing on the other side. Just knock out those three blocks. That'll give us this working space here. The first thing we're going to do now is install the, uh, water tank on the underbelly here. So, this first row here, where the wool slubs go from one wide to three wide right here, 
Skipping this first row on the second block back of this uh, three wide box here, we're going to knock out that um, quartz or wall top slab rather right there, and replace it with a quartz upside down stair facing forwards like this. Knock out two more half slabs going back from this here, and replace these with quartz upside down stairs facing out to the side like this. Same thing on the other side here. So skipping that first top slab there, one, two, and three back. Four slabs are done, stair facing forwards, and two out to the side, like this. Now to join these up in the center here, we're just trying to knock out that wall top slab there, and replace that with a four slabs are done, stair facing forwards, like so. So you get this kind of cornered off shape. Next, going back here, we're just trying to knock out, um, well basically all three of these wall top slabs back as well just to give us a workspace here. And in this space here, what we're going to have is a normal quartz stair facing backwards this time. Not an upside down, but a normal stair. Then a normal stair facing up to the side to corner that off, like so. Same thing here, so normal stair facing backwards and normal stair out to the side. Now underneath all of this here, starting from the front, what we're going to have here is a row of three quartz top slabs underneath these upside down stairs here, going across to the front. Then bring this all the way back here, so, I'll just start from the center. One, two, three, four, and five back. Overshooting by one here. And box this off to the side so you have a five by three box like this. The last thing we're going to do here is place a, uh, let's see, an upside down quartz stair facing backwards from this here. Same thing on the other side, quartz stair facing backwards. Now what we can do here is round this off a little bit more to be more accurate to the kind of the curvature of the actual uh, water tank. And for this, yet again, another world edit trick. So uh, we're just going to place an upside down stair facing backwards just anywhere, then round this off with a quartz stair facing up to the side like this. Replace tool, select that, and paste over that uh, stair like this. We're also going to knock out that, um, actually, I probably should have done this first. We're going to knock out that wool top slot in the center there and replace that with a quartz full block. Now we can paste over that stair there and that'll uh, get that in without any block updates messing with it. So same thing here on the right side. Upside down stair facing backwards and upside down stair out to the side to corner that off. Select and paste. That'll give you this nice rounded shape like so. Now going back from this here, uh, where we have this wool top slab, this, well, this row that is, we're going to knock out this first wool top slab there, replace that with a quartz full block with a single quartz top slab underneath. And that is everything for the water tank. Now that we have the water tank in place, the next thing we're going to do is put in the searchlight at the underneath the nose of the aircraft here. So in the center row here where we have these three wool top slabs across, we're going to knock out the second or the center wool top slab that is here and place an upside down netherbert stair facing backwards in its place just like this. This is for a uh, black searchlight sticking out underneath the nose of the helicopter here. Now that we have that, the next thing we're going to do is thicken up the uh, rear of the helicopter here. So, for this, where we have these two wool top slabs going back here, we're going to replace that first wool top slab with a wool full block, and the second wool top slab here with an upside down wool stair facing backwards. Now going back here, we're going to knock out this long row of birch uh, trapdoors here, and the tail dragger wheel right there as well. Now going back, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and uh, actually just five wool top slabs here, back from that uh, wool stair. Then an upside down wool stair facing backwards here to start off the um, kind of the larger um, <laughs> uh, strut for the tail dragger here. Now it's worth mentioning that uh, in real life, just due to the uh, larger main landing gear uh, to accommodate for the water tank, the S-70 Firehawk actually sits at a bit of a backwards angle. So the center is kind of raised off the ground, while the rear of the fuselage still sits exactly where it would. And within the limitations of Minecraft, we can't really accommodate for that, unfortunately, or well at least. So we do build this without uh, tilt simulated here. So this does just leave the tail dragger a little bit longer than uh, would be normally, but yeah, that's that's basically what's going on here. Just just an interesting fact to you know be be aware of with the actual firehawk. But uh, yeah, so with that ramble out of the way, back from this upside down stair here where we're lengthening the tail dragger, 
we're going to have one and two, that's not where that goes, two birch trapdoors going back from that upside down stair on the top half right here, just to finish off the curve of the aft section. Now to put the tail dragger back in here, uh, underneath this first birch trap door there, we're going to replace that player stool where we had the tail dragger wheel, and then place a lever on the back face of it here. And in order for this to happen, to have a lever on the face of a player stool, yet again, world edit, <laughs> saves the lives. So temporary block, lever, select that, and temporary block in front of that uh, wheel there, and paste over like so. That'll connect that upside down stair there off with the tail dragger wheel. And with that, that's everything for the aft section. So now that we have that all done, the very last thing to do for the Firehawk here is to put the extended main landing gear back in. So for this, what we're going to do here is come down to the water tank, and out to the side of this very first course upside down stair right there, we're going to place a cobblestone wall there with a second wall going back. Behind this here, we're going to have a jungle fence and a birch trap door on top of that jungle fence and the first cobblestone wall right there to connect in with the fuselage. Now we can also further connect this birch fence into the aircraft via the use of world edit by placing two jungle fences next to each other like this, selecting the left one there, and then pasting it over that fence just like this. Now again, if you don't have access to world edit, it isn't exactly essential, but it does help to improve the definition of this strut here. So this is the strut that connects off to the fuselage here to support the gear, and this section in the front here is the um, uh, suspension assembly for the larger landed gear. Now that we have the struts in place, underneath this jungle fence here, we're going to have a player stole again with a temporary block in front. Lever, select that and paste over, just like we did with the tail dragger there. This will connect that uh, wheel gear up with the uh, suspension assembly again. And we can just do the same thing on the right side of the aircraft here, or helicopter rather. So, cobblestone wall out to the side of that uh, quartz stair there, second going back, and a jungle fence there. Two jungle fences next to each other, select the right fence, and paste over that jungle fence there. Birch trap door on top of that jungle fence, and the cobblestone wall right there, that first one that is. Player stole underneath the jungle fence, temporary block, and a lever. Select that and paste over the temporary block like this. Make sure it's flipped facing up into the suspension. Anyways, with that, that'll give you the extended main landed gear here, and the S70i Firehawk is done. So, congratulations on completing the Sikorsky S70i Blackhawk. Thank you so much for choosing an Team design. We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it as a part of whatever project you're using this for. Do feel free to use this in any kind of publicly available project you like given that you of course provide proper credit to the Aero team for these designs. So if you have built this helicopter, let us know. We'd love to see how you're using our designs. Tag us on Twitter, or share it with us on our Discord server. If you enjoyed, please do consider subscribing to the Aero team channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. Anyways, that is just about it. So, thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.